a lot of foreigners in China would have had the experience of being the uh, token Lao Wai, the token foreigner at a board meeting room table uh, to build credibility to an, uh, a Chinese organization to give perhaps a perception that they are more international. I had the experience a couple of years ago where a friend of mine asked me to be the token foreigner at uh, a festival in a second tier city and my role uh, as I am a practitioner in international event management was to be an international practitioner that was attending this event and announcing to the group that their festival had been voted third at a recently held conference on international festivals in China so that they had reached this ranking and to kind of congratulate them but to be the token foreigner to do that. Uh, I was quite happy to agree. Uh, it's all about building relationships here and that's a, a, a good favour and, and, uh, and, and can be quite enjoyable as well. So when I uh, finally got to this particular second tier city, we were at a dinner the night before and uh, when I was at the dinner, actually the table next to me, which had the, uh, the long, uh, longest uh, serviette, which normally symbolises it's the most important person, that was empty. And finally, later into the dinner, after a few drinks, uh, this uh, uh, official had arrived and uh, he sat down and uh, uh, there was much rejoicing, much eating, much drinking. And finally, I got to the point of asking him about uh, my role in the uh, festivities on the following day and uh, he gave me a little speech, it was all in Chinglish, uh, I had to interpret it and rewrite it but it was effectively as I explained it was making this uh, announcement uh, of the success of this festival of its ranking. Then I asked what time was I to be delivering this and he said about eight o'clock and when he said eight o'clock I thought oh well that must be in the hotel ballroom about eight o'clock at night, speeches, what have you. So I said okay well eight o'clock at night so uh, I'll have to be there around seven. He went oh no 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 We've got the uh, official uh, cavalcade of vehicles picking up from the hotel at seven in the morning. And I'm like, seven in the morning? So this is around eight o'clock in the morning. Then he goes, yes, 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 it's, it's at the opening ceremony. And I said, well, where's the opening ceremony? He went, oh, it's in the stadium. And I'm like, how many people will, be, will I be addressing? And uh, he thought about it for a moment and then said, well, it should be about 30, 35,000 people. Mm. So uh, that was uh, a moment where I got my glass out and asked for a little bit more Beijo, a little bit more of that nice white rice liquor to uh, uh, increase my confidence there. Anyway, the following day, uh, there was a very, uh, what would you call it? It was almost like a Soviet-esque uh, opening ceremony with a huge grandstand um, Thousands of people holding up cards, giving different symbols across the, the stadium. Uh, open top People's Liberation Army vehicles with uh, women in uniform singing patriotic songs, standing up, going through. Uh, but it was also international. There was also a, um, a troop of Maori uh, performers from Rotorua, and the mayor of Rotorua was there because of some sister city relationships. So it was actually quite a big deal. Uh, and um, I delivered my speech and uh, my announcement. There was uh, applause and there was uh, uh, one of those China experiences there. But the, the bottom line of that was that uh, uh, I was providing uh, assistance to these guys in being a, a foreign face to give uh, credibility, more international credibility to their festival, uh, which I was happy to do. Uh, but this practice isn't something that's unique to Chinese organizations. Uh, just a, a few weeks ago we had an event in Seoul in Korea and what we wanted to do as an organization was to showcase in front of our international clients in Seoul that we have capability and efficacy in the People's Republic of China. So what we did was we flew one of our staff members, a Chinese national, uh, to attend the event, to help with the delivery, but also to be sitting at meetings, effectively quite silent, but they're just looking Chinese. And when, when she did speak, she spoke about what she had done there before. Now, I could have done that myself, uh, but the way I would be perceived compared to the way my colleague would be perceived is completely different. And so, so we were also using this practice of uh, having a, a foreign face to build credibility and confidence. So I think with this um, idea of what a foreign face is, we shouldn't just limit it to a, to a, a European face. It can be a, a, a Japanese face, it could be a Korean or a, Jap or a, or a Chinese, uh, depending in which context and in which environment and which message you're trying to get across. But it's something that uh, we can all use.